In this video, we're going to be looking at bounded and unbounded intervals. And so last time we were mentioning about intervals being all numbers between two given numbers. Okay, so typically we use inequalities, which you can see here. So inequalities are using those inequality symbols that we talked about before. So the less than, greater than signs. And then a graph is specifically talking about a number graph. So we're going to be drawing a lot of number graphs here. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw them out for us. So before we graph this inequality, I do want to mention a few things about these inequality symbols and how they are represented on the graph. So short little note here to the side. So whenever you have inequalities that um, don't have the line underneath, so it means it doesn't equal that value, um, typically you want to use what we call a open, my bad, open circle. It kind of looks like this, basically like an O but it's not filled. And anytime you have the inequality with the equal sign underneath, you want to use a close circle. So basically draw a circle and then fill it in. So kind of showing that on our graph here, let's do number one. The first thing when I do when I graph is draw the number line. And then I take the numbers that are given in the inequality. So I have a negative three and a three, so I'm gonna plot them. But here's the thing you need to remember. The number line, you're going to always assume that the left side has negative numbers, so it points to negative infinity, and the right side points to positive infinity. You must do it in that order. So in this case, when I plot negative 3, I want to put it on further to the left side, and then the positive 3 further on the right side. So negatives go on like the left side, positive goes on the right side. And so when I'm looking at this negative 3 in this inequality, notice that they use a... Um, uh, inequality with a line underneath. So that means I'm going to use a closed circle on the three. And then when I look at the positive three, there's also a line, so I'm going to use a closed circle as well. And now what I do is now color where X is appearing. So X, when I read this, is between negative three and positive three. So in that case, it's going to be between here. So I'm going to color that region. You can use a highlighter too, or just um, shade in with your pencil. And so that's how I represent it. Um, when we're looking at interval notation, what you do is interval notation uses parentheses and brackets. And how do you know which one to use is based off of your um, inequality symbol or your circles. So if you have an open circle, you always use a parentheses. If you have a closed circle, you use a bracket because that is touching that number, it equals that number, so you use a bracket instead. Um, so in this case here, if I were to write an interval, you always write the, um, let me make a little space here. You always write the least number or the smallest number first. Let me just write here, small number first, then the bigger number. So there always should be two numbers in an interval and the smallest number comes first and then the bigger number. So in this case, the smallest number is negative three. So I'm gonna write negative three comma the bigger number. And what I do is look at the number and its circle. So this was a closed circle and this one was also a closed circle. So both of them, I'm going to give a bracket. All right, let's try another one here. So this one has the inequality sign that doesn't have an equal sign, but first let's pop in our number. So again, it's negative three and three. But this time I'm gonna use an open circle because in this case it doesn't have a line underneath, so I need an open circle based on my notes here. And also X is between these two numbers, so I need a shade between negative three and three, so kind of like the same thing as before. But what's different is the open circles. So in this time, I'm going to write negative three and three again but I'm going to use parentheses this time. The next one here, again, it's still that negative three and three, but I want you to notice that one of them here has an inequality with the line underneath, so I need a solid circle on the negative three, whereas the positive three, I need an open circle because it doesn't have a line. But I'm still shading in between because it says that X 
is between negative 3 and 3 since it's in the middle. So I'm always shading where x is located. So I'm showing that it's between negative 3 and 3. So when I do the, um, the interval notation, I need to do for the negative 3 a bracket, but the positive 3 needs a parentheses. And last but not least, you guys probably will get the gist of it by now. Um, I need an open circle on the 3 since I have an inequality sign that doesn't have a line. But this one, I do have a line on the positive 3, so I need a closed circle. I'm going to shade in between again because that represents my x's. And so I'll need my interval notation to be a parentheses first this time and then a bracket. And there we go. We have just created our bound intervals in three different representation, an inequality, a graph, and an interval notation. By the way, bounded intervals is referring to um, that the x is between two numbers, but this is not always the case. So bounded is kind of nice because there are two finite numbers that it's between, but I'm gonna show you some cases where it's not so finite. So let's take a look at unbounded intervals. So when it comes to unbounded intervals here, the ones we have in these examples, notice how the inequality, I don't give you two numbers besides x. In this case, um, x only has one number that's being compared to. So this one says that x is greater than or equal to 2. So first thing I want to do here is just draw my number lines. I just want to get warmed up here. Draw my number lines. And so when I'm looking at this symbol here, it's saying that x is bigger than 2. So first things first, I need to place my 2 in my number line. Now remember, this side is going to positive infinity, and this side's going to negative infinity. When x is bigger than 2, um, or, well actually, let's put in our closed circle, since this has an inequality with a line, so we need a closed circle. Um, so if x is bigger than 2, which side does it have to be shaded? The right side or the left side? Well, if x is bigger than 2, then it has to be on the right side, right? Because it, numbers bigger than 2 are like 3, 4, 100, and they're all on this side. So that means I have to shade towards the right. And so now that tells me my interval because my interval notation is going to be between 2 and infinity. So I'm going to use a 2 and infinity symbol. And the 2, I need a bracket because it's a closed circle. But here's the thing. What do I put on the infinity? Well, this is how I remember. Can you ever touch infinity? No, because it goes on and on forever. You can't touch it. If you can't touch the number, that means you can't equal the number. If you can't equal it, then you always use a parentheses, and that's how I remember. I always ask myself, can I touch infinity? No, I can't, so that means I have to use a parentheses. So the next one here also uses a 2, but this time it uses an open circle. So I'm going to have an open circle here. I'll put my infinity signs. It just helps me visualize my graph a little bit better. But it says that x is greater than 2 again. So again, I am shading on the right side because these are numbers bigger than 2. And so this one's kind of the same as before. It goes from 2 to infinity. So I'm going to write 2 to infinity. And infinity, I want to write on the right side because infinity is definitely bigger than 2. And so again, a parentheses on infinity. And I'm going to use a parentheses on the 2 since this is an open circle. And our next one here is x is less than or equal to 2. So let's um, put down our 2 with a closed circle. But this time, x is less than 2. So let's just think about this. If x is less than 2, numbers that are less than 2 are 1, 0, negative numbers are less than 2. So we want to be shading in the left direction. So that means our interval now is between negative infinity to positive 2. So we're going to write it in the same order, negative infinity to positive 2 with a bracket on the 2 and an the infinity needs a parentheses. Every type of infinity needs a parentheses because you can't touch it. And now for the next one here, same thing, x is less than 2, but this time you'll need a open circle. And you're also shading to the left because it is going to negative infinity um, because x is less than 2, so it needs numbers less than 2. 
So I always like to draw the graph first because once I draw the graph, it becomes so clear to me what is being shaded and what is that interval that's shaded. So I can see here this interval is negative two, negative infinity to positive two. So I'm gonna write that down and I need a parentheses on both of them. Now this last one here um, gives you the interval first and then we have to fill in the other two. So this interval here has a negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's just go ahead and represent that on our graph. That would be at the two arrow sites. So this is going to negative infinity to positive infinity. Now you definitely can't touch those, so that's why there's parentheses here. But if this is representing an interval between negative infinity to positive infinity, that means I'm shading everything between those two um, sites. So this would represent all the numbers on the number line. That means this is the all real numbers. X represents all the real numbers. Also, later on, you're going to see me represent all real numbers with this kind of like an R. It looks like an R, but it has a slash through the R. Like there's two lines on the R. And this is an easier way to represent this word, uh, the sentence here, all real numbers. So a way to shorthand saying all real numbers is to use this R looking symbol. And that's it for this video.